What's up everybody, I'm Patrick Kelly and today we're talking about pain. And I'm not talking about the, my dad never brought me to soccer practice when I was a kid kind of pain. I'm talking about real physical injury kind of pain. But to do that, I'm gonna need you to think about the last time that you got a good bump on the arm or a shinner, something good that left like a nice bruise. And unless you had immediate access to an ice pack, there's a good chance that you put your hand on the injury spot. Not because you needed to stabilize the injury, but because something in your brain knew that that would make it feel better. And it's true. Putting touch on an injury site can mask the pain, but how does that work? And we'll get to that, but first, time for the big picture. Pain is just a sensation. You were probably taught the five senses back in primary school. Vision, smell, taste, touch, hearing. Pain isn't on that list. That's because the idea of senses is actually kind of vague. They leave a lot of information out. But if we wanna get a deeper look into what actually happens, we can study the physiology of the nerves that make up the anatomy of each of those senses. Your tongue and nose might be responsible for the overall sense of taste, but each taste bud is more specialized for a specific taste, like the taste buds for salty or for sweet. That's because they contain chemoreceptors, nerves that detect chemicals like the ones that give off flavor or smell. At the cellular level, these are highly specialized cells, but collectively, they make up the overall sense of taste. The same thing happens with the sense of touch. We can tell that a blanket is both soft and warm, or that a knife is both sharp and stiff. And it's all because we have different kinds of nerve endings in our skin that signal for different types of touch. And we can divide those into three categories. We have thermoreceptors that detect temperature, a bunch of different mechanoreceptors that detect mechanical pressure or distortion. When you think of the sense of touch, you're probably thinking about what these nerve endings detect. And just to give you an idea of how specific these nerve endings get, we have different nerve endings for low frequency vibrations and other ones for high frequency vibrations, some for sustained pressure and some for just tension in the skin. They're all really specialized cells that together make up our overall sense of touch. And finally, we've got nociceptors that send pain signals to our brain. Anytime we get a signal from one of them, we call that a noxious signal. Anything else is innocuous. If you've seen this diagram before, you're probably familiar with structures like the epidermis and the dermis, but never really knew that those mechanoreceptors were hiding in there the whole time. Now, that diagram is just the surface. That's the point where the outside world meets our nervous system. Each one of those nerve endings is connected to a nerve, but not all nerves nerves are created equal. The nociceptors tend to hook onto something with a little bit of a thinner diameter, while the mechanoreceptors tend to have a thicker nerve. All right, let's assume for just a second that you just get, you get punched in the face. Immediately, those nerve signals are just signals. They haven't gotten registered in the brain as, hey, I just got punched in the face. That first part, getting punched in the face and then those nociceptors getting stimulated and sending signals to the brain, that's the process of sensation. It isn't until the brain picks up on what's going on and interprets it that you are now in the process of perception. Now your brain has made sense of everything and can say, hey, I just got punched in the face. And for something painful, those noxious signals travel to the thalamus and then to the somatosensory cortex to get interpreted it a little bit further. And that pathway makes enough sense to me, but something stuck out while I was researching for this video. Specifically, like, how does your body tell what gets coded as pain in the first place? I mean, you can shake somebody's hand and it would be fine, but that same size hand can put a death grip on you and that is painful. So then how does your body say, this is fine, but this hurts? Well, that's exactly what researchers Melzack and Wall investigated in their 1965 article in the journal Science. See, up until then, there were two main theories of pain, the pattern theory and the specificity theory. Now, there were other pain theories at the time too, but these were the ones that the research team outlined on their paper. Melzack and Wall looked for a way to tie together the pattern and the specificity theory, but also try to incorporate our own psychology and perception of pain. And that's where the gate control theory of pain comes in. Remember how earlier I was talking about rubbing injuries to mask the pain? Once you get hurt, those nociceptors send signals towards your brain so it can be perceived as pain, right? Here's what Melzack and Wall proposed. Any nerve signal could go to one of two in-between destinations while it's on the way to the brain, either to transmission cells that would pick up the signal and take it to the brain, or inhibitory interneurons that would make the activity less intense. For those interested, this happens in the dorsal horn of your brainstem in an area called the substantia gelatinosa. When just the noxious stimuli are coming in, they'll turn down the inhibitory interneuron, which lets them bust through the transmission cells on the way to the brain unhindered. And I know the wording can be a little confusing, so when we're saying decreasing the inhibitory interneuron, that's kind of like a double negative. 
So that's really meaning that it's increasing its ability to go through the transmission cells. Going back to the example of getting punched in the face, when you rub your face because it hurts, the nerves attached to those mechanoreceptors are actually increasing the inhibitory inner neuron on the pain signals. And this is where they got the name gate control theory. Your face is still giving off signals for pain, but by stimulating those touch receptors, you close the gate which kept the pain signal from reaching your brain. But you can also close the gate from the other direction. Gate control theory says that messages coming from the brain can shut the gate on noxious signals as well. So if you just like stepped on a Lego because you were trying to save a baby from a burning building, you might not notice the pain until you knew that you were safe and out of the fire. And hopefully you return that baby safe. Not every form of pain relief uses this pathway though. Medications and anesthesia use completely different paths. Now, obviously something super painful like a broken bone is going to overpower any mechanoreceptor stimulation. But for your minor bumps and bruises, it's nice to have some pain relief and the gate control theory of pain offers that. Thank you for watching. If you learned something today, would you mind liking the video? I'd really appreciate it. And if you wanna subscribe, you can go ahead and click on my face right there. And if you wanna watch another video about this muscle right here, you can click in this general area. So until I see you next time, have fun, be good. See you next week.